Hi there, it's Kevin Ward with Yes Masters Real Estate Success Training, helping you get more yeses and more successes in your business and in your life. And today's video is actually a response to an email. It's a question I get occasionally, and it's a question that is kind of perennial or has been around forever with real estate agents, and that is, should I ever take an overpriced listing? When do I take an overpriced listing? And my position is that you never want to take an overpriced listing. And today I'm gonna to talk about exactly why taking an overpriced listing is such a, such a damaging thing to do for yourself, for your business, and for your clients. However, I wanna let you know I was responding to this email that I got from an agent, uh, I think it's a fairly new agent, who says basically I've been, I was calling a couple of for sale by owners, after meeting with one, it, after a meeting, one agreed to list with me. So they went on the listing presentation. They did the, or they one agreed to list with me. They were doing, the, I'm doing the CMA, and I discovered basically uh, that the house, the market price for the listing would be way less than they'd be willing to take. I'm not sure what to do. I know they will not agree to list for less than a certain price. On the other hand, I'm fairly certain that at their desired price, the house will just sit there. So on the one hand, I can take the listing to get my sign out, or should I just refuse to take the listing? Now, first off, just to answer the unspoken part of that question, is there's not only two alternatives. The, the question says, should I either take an overpriced listing to get my sign out, or should I refuse the listing? The third alternative is to find out their motivation, and then to educate them and help lead them to a decision to list with you at a price that will actually cause it to sell. And that's the third alternative. However, today in today's video, I want to deal specifically with this question of should I ever take a listing just to get my sign out there and get buyer calls and so forth, or because I don't want to lose the listing to another agent or whatever. And basically, what you've got to understand is, and what's really important to understand is, that you never want to take an overpriced listing for two reasons. Number one is very simply because taking an overpriced listing is simply bad business. I think it's one of the things in, in the real estate industry that really gripes me is that in the real estate in real estate, a lot of brokers and managers and trainers will even tell you, hey, take an overpriced listing if you have to, and then you can work work on the sellers to get them to reduce the price. And there are countless agents out there that are willing to take overpriced listings because they, they, they know that it won't sell, but maybe the seller will eventually come down and, and in the meantime, they can get buyer calls. Now, what's wrong with this? Well, number one, it's bad business. It, here's, here's the thing, it's unethical for a couple of reasons. One is you're putting the house on the market at a price that you know will not sell. Now, is that what the seller is hiring you to do? And here's my simple way of looking at it and what I train all of my coaching members, and that is that sellers don't hire you to market their house. Sellers hire you to help them move. <laughs> they hire, and if they've already moved, they're, they're hiring you to help, to help them get the property sold. So what they want from you is not putting it on the market. What they want from you is to deliver a result. And that result is to get do top dollar for the house. And when you put a house on the market, at a price that it will not sell, which happens across the United States most uh, about, I think it's in most markets over 50% of the time that a house is put on the market at a price that it will not sell, which means it simply requires one or more price reductions. Now, you say, well, you can always reduce the price. Here's the problem. The longer a house sits on the market, the lower the offers it tends to generate. And when a house is sat on the market for weeks and weeks or months and months, at a price that it would not sell, by the time you finally get it to the right price, it's stale. It's been sitting on the market too long and it takes on what I call the WWWTH syndrome, which is what's wrong with that house? And when that happens, houses tend to, one, buyers tend to write lower offers, and number two, they tend to be more reluctant or take their time less urgent in writing those offers, and so you lose all the leverage for getting your seller's top dollar. So number one, it's bad business in terms of getting your sellers the result that they really want, because the ultimate reality is every seller who insists on listing their, high, their home at a price that it will not sell, listing it overpriced, is because they want more money for the house. And the problem is that overpriced listing typically actually ends up costing them more than it helps them. So as a professional real estate agent, you gotta educate them. 
and help them understand that that will only hurt them when a house sits on the market too long. You got to know your market, you got to know your stats, and you got to know how to articulate and communicate that in a way that will help the seller get it and understand that. Here's the second reason, is if you're doing it to get buyer calls, and especially when you take a listing, uh, when an agent takes a listing just to get buyer calls, or I know the seller's not that motivated, but it'll get my sign out there and so forth. Look, that's, bad. that's unethical. It's just flat out, if you're putting a sign out, taking a listing just for your own benefit, in any other profession, I mean, what would happen if, if you went to a doctor and a doctor performed a surgery on you that was not in your best interest because he, he knew that it would benefit him, make him, a, make him some extra money? Well, he would be sued for malpractice. What if an attorney takes, knows that you can't win a case, but they say, hey, I'll represent you, I'll help you win, and they take the retainer from you and they take all the attorney fees knowing at the end of the day you're going to lose? You'd want to have them disbarred, right? See, the reality is in, if a CPA misrepresented you and your tax prep or tax return and so forth in a way just to get himself a bigger paycheck or herself a bigger paycheck, that would be inexcusable. Only in real estate is it actually considered normal and common practice for us to take and put listings on the market at a price that we know is not in the best interest of the seller, that is not going to get them the result. And my whole perspective of that is it's time as a real estate community that we raise the bar a little bit for ourselves and decide that we need to learn how to get yes without the BS and taking a listing over price when you know better is BS. It's bad sales. It's bad business. It's unethical and it doesn't represent your seller's best interest. Bottom line is if you're taking a listing for your own benefit rather than for your seller's benefit, then you need to question what you're doing. It's probably bad business. But I'll tell you a second thing. Not only is it bad business for the, in terms of your representing the client, it's just flat out bad marketing. Now watch this. This is the most crazy thing to me. It's just insane to me why we do this. This question, listen to this. Should I take the listing to get my sign out? Okay, I want to get buyer calls. All right, so let's just think about this. Is this good marketing to put your house, to take a listing, get your sign out there and uh, on an overpriced listing? Well, here's the way I look at it. Which would you rather have more, but more buyer calls or would you like more listings? You want more buyers or more listings? And most real estate agents that want to make a lot of money and build a big business and they're even interested in taking listings is that everybody would prefer to have more listings. Now, if you take a listing overpriced, put the sign out there in a price you know it won't sell, you may get and probably will get some buyer inquiries. It gives you that listing. However, have you also thought about the negative marketing that you're doing? And here's what I'm talking about. When you put a sign up in front of somebody, so I'm going to draw a picture here of a, we'll just call this a real estate sign right here. This is for sale. So I've got a real estate, I've got a listing here and I've got the sign out there that this house is for sale, right? There you go. There's a, for, there's a real estate agent for sale sign. Every homeowner in the entire neighborhood knows that the house is for sale, right? And they see it and they go like, ah, Kevin took a new listing. Good for him. Got a new listing out there. They see my name. They see my brand. They see my company. They see it all there. And they see it there day after day after day after week after month. And all they begin to realize is this agent doesn't know how to get a house sold. So what are we really marketing here? If you want to put a sign in somebody's yard at a price of a listing that will not sell, there is, nothing, there is no worse marketing on the planet that to, than to put a sign in somebody's yard and then a few months later for it to come down without a sold sign on it. And all the neighbors know, all the homeowners in the area know that you would like to build a business with. You'd like, if you're farming an area, what do you want? You want sellers. But you take an overpriced listing in your farm and you've just told everybody that lives and owns a house in that neighborhood, hey, if you ever want to sell your house, don't list with that dude because he doesn't know how to get a result. He knows how to take a listing. He doesn't know how to sell a listing. So your marketing actually is marketing don't list with me rather than marketing that, hey, if you need a great real estate agent, I'm your guy. It's absolutely amazing. And that's when you really think about it, that not only is it bad business, but taking an overpriced listing, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, it's bad marketing. Why would you take an overpriced listing to get your sign out there? All you're doing is telling everybody, hey, I don't know what to, I'm doing. So if you want better results, get better at taking listings at prices they will sell. One of the things I teach my coaching members, this happens all the time. I've got a, one of my coaching members up in uh, 
Southern California uh, in Ventura County. He just took a listing that had been previously listed for $940,000 and expired. He, when he pre-qualified the sellers, they wanted, they realized, you know what is overpriced at, at 940? We're thinking 880, 885. He went in, took a market analysis, shot straight with them, followed a process that I teach you to educate sellers and lead them to a good decision. They listed the house for $775,000, sold it in less than 10 days with multiple offers. Why? Because they priced it and positioned it in the market where it needed to be. That's good business. It's great marketing. He wins, they wins, he's happy, they're happy. It works all the way around when you learn how to do it right. So here's what you gotta do. Do it right, engage the opportunity, and always expect yes.